Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Um, this video is going to be about how to transfer in a grayscale uh, painting to color using um, Photoshop editing. And um, this uh, video was a bit of a challenge, challenge from my friend Alex because he um, is a skeptic with this subject and he doesn't think that there is any way to do it without having muddy looking skin or muddy looking um, results. And the main reason why skin can look muddy, or it can look really, the painting as a whole, can look really muddy um, after transferring it into grayscale is because um, the values that you're painting in might be a bit too low. Now, there are colors in the color wheel that only exist in a certain scale. If they go any less, they stop being that color. Green is one of those colors that doesn't do that. Green stays green in all its value ranges, it's just that's how green works, blue, red, but when you get into the yellow and orange, that's when you really start to see how they change with the, ch with the value decreasing. Because the yellow in itself, in it by itself, is a very bright color. And as artists, we have to recognize that color is part of the color wheel. That yellow is part of the color wheel. But yellow only is yellow at this value range, literally at the brightest versions of itself. There needs to be a lot of brightness, a lot of saturation, and a lot of white of the light source to get yellow. If you go any less than that, look at what happens. It starts to turn brown. There's no dark version of yellow, and that's why people have a difficult time painting yellow. Sometimes when you're painting yellow dress or yellow anything, there always has to be a gray shadow color for the yellow. You cannot go dark on yellow without going gray because that's the only way it really stays as a yellow. It doesn't You can't properly desaturate yellow or decrease its value. You have to decrease it very gently. Do you see that? Another main color that happens in skin tone is orange. Orange also has that I only exist in this level. Cause it's very elite colors, I see them. They're very snobby. <clears throat> it starts to turn into a brown, as you can see here reds as well, a little bit of reds. So this orange, that yellow orange, yellow orange, orange yellow, yellow orange and yellow. <clears throat> As you can see they stop being that color. But red, it's pretty red all around, you know, it starts it maintains it's that it's cool tone. It looks red, it can we have a dark red dress and a red apple, you can call them both red, but you wouldn't have a yellow flower and really dark bark and call both yellow. Call both objects yellow. Yellow only exists in its range and when you're painting skin, that's the problem. The problem is that you are forgetting to keep the skin at a certain high value range. So let's take a look at Alex's values. Alex has been studying values for the past couple months and he's been doing really good. He's improving. Amazing, amazing artist. Um, but the only issue here in this image that I see in front of me is proportion. You need to take a look at your proportions a little bit, but I'll get to that in a second when I'm doing, when I'm doing the liquify. For now, let's test out your value. So let's keep our color wheel open. Let's take a look at your lightest tone. Where is it in comparison to this light tone? So this light tone is in no man's land. Okay, so let me grayscale this so that you can compare the scale only. Whoops, that's not how you grayscale. Okay. All right, so let's compare again. <clears throat> so the highest tone here, the lightest tones, these two that keep to the yellow, which is why you need to keep the skin tone highlights to the yellow because that's where the light is touching and the light always has a hint of yellow in it, especially if it's a warm light, there's a hint of orange or yellow or red even. And you have to remember that. You have to remember to, to when you choose a skin tone color, that's the highlight color, there's always a hint of yellow in it, which complements the purples and the, and the cool shades and the shadows. But we'll get to that in a second. So your highlight is pretty good. It's not in no man's land. This is no man's land. This white, you'll never need it. It's artificial. This white here, this is a pretty good white. This is where you're choosing your area from. Your darkest tone is not in no man's land. It's a pretty, pretty normal color. Pretty normal dark. It's pretty average. And it's not a black hole. And you've used it very well. You've made sure all the darkest darks are no darker than the dark of the eye, which should be the darkest place on the face because that is the purest black, the pupil. 
Okay, so the nostril is not darker than the eye, very good. And then the lip shadows is not darker than the nostrils, it's almost the same. So this is all very good. Your values are, in, are, on, are spot on. Another issue with transferring from grayscale into color is the combination of colors. It's not just a beige, and it's not just a, a bright yellow or a bright pink for pale, pale um, skin. So when you're choosing pale, or, or let's say you're choosing a tan person, the most average sort of half tanned, half not tanned person, usually you choose the colors from here. And look at how close you are to orange and yellow. You're already in that evil realm of high value. You have to stay in that high value to keep it, to keep the skin looking like skin and not looking like mud. So you're already at that high value. So let's say this is where you choose this color from. This color isn't the only color that plays in this skin tone. There are pinks, there are yellows, there are purples, there are greens. So don't forget to also include those in, in the transfer of color. <clears throat> transfer from grayscale into color. <clears throat> All right, so let's get crackalackin'. Let's choose our main skin tone. Let me choose that skin tone that I just chose. And let me see what happens. Remember, this stage is experimental. And there are many ways to go about it, many tools on Photoshop that help you change grayscale into a color. What I usually use is the color mode. And I get my skin tone color. And it already looks muddy because look at what's happening to the dark tones. There are dark shadows here that are already looking muddy. This is not right. The only place it really looks good is in the mid-tones in this area of the nose. So that's where I'm going to put it. And I'm going to put it in gently. I'm not going to stroke with a very hard brush. Just throwing it in gently, very, very gently. Next thing I'm going to do is choose a brownie gray to paint over that, to paint over the areas that I don't want colored. I know I could have just erased it, but I just want to stay on my brush tool. I'm also going to press some of that brownie gray color onto the highlights because there's a certain degree of desaturation that happens in highlights with skin because that's a pure version of the color if the color is white of the light source. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep it at a, at a very controlled environment. <laughs> nothing too intense right now. Very basic stuff. Oh, my bad. I forgot to liquefy. So let me filter, um, I mean flip it. And let me show you where the main issue you had with your liquefy, with your proportions. Basically your main issue was with the horizontal lines and the vertical lines. Okay, so let me straighten it all back. What happens in the early stages is that even though you might have used horizontal lines, they were angled to begin with. And so when you render, that's when you really see the problems <coughs> just come through. The nose is very well painted, your values are all in place, it's just this proportion problem that's stopping your painting from reaching its potential. Okay, so I already see that, that tilt you had going on. Let me flip it back. The, the kind of face you drew is very beautiful. It's very real, really organic looking. The only um, problem was the, um, the, the, the horizontal, the symmetry, the vertical symmetry. Okay. Now the eyes are a bit big. I'm just going to shrink them a touch after editing. They do look a bit big after. If you hear that roaring, that's the thunder outside. <laughs> I love it when it rains. <clears throat> I always feel like we're on an adventure or something. Okay, and the chin. I really recommend looking at some of my videos that do talk about how to draw each feature group. Um, so the eyes, nose, and lips, um, and three-quarter view are really go in depth, and they're always rooted back to the principle of symmetry. I really recommend you take a look at that, Alex. Okay, so 
fix the proportions. Let me show you how they looked before I did that before. Do you see that floppy sideways look that seems like you're looking at it from the side? And after we pushed everything back together, the skeletal structure is stabilized. If this was a problem with her face, it would be not at the flesh level, it would be at the skeletal structure. It would be a genetic disorder that causes the skeletal structure to develop asymmetrically, where it's genetically um, formed or programmed to develop symmetrically. The genetic problem makes it develop asymmetrically, which makes the eyes develop asymmetrically, and everything is attached back to the skeletal structure. So that's where you, that's what, that's sort of a hint to how you can boil it down to where you need to study the most. You need to study the skeletal structure. So that way you remember it next time you draw a face and you realize that the lines keep you remembering the skeletal structure after. Okay, let me just sharpen because I lost some edges. Filter, run um, with the um, liquify. Okay, so let me zoom out. I'm going to get my soft brush now. Now it's time to bring those other colors in. So what I'm going to do is merge down. If I merge down, the colors are going to act differently on the beige that I just found when I put it on color mode. Because now the color mode is working with the colors there already. And all you really have to do is play around with these modes and figure out what they do for you, your style, etc. <clears throat> now this does look a bit washed out. It does look a bit gray. And the reason for that is we're still not done. We're still not done getting that base tone going. The next thing that I do if I were to transfer. Usually I start straight off from color, but you need this stage, this grayscale to color stage, to teach you at least do three paintings from grayscale to color so that you really learn. So let me show you the colors I want to use. First and foremost, I recommend you get this palette going as well. My bad for not recommending it earlier. When you want to transfer from color, from grayscale to color, get the palette ready anyway. I know it might be in your head. Sometimes I have to sort of slow down myself down and remember that not everyone does it my way, so I usually just imagine it. I work from what I am used to, and in my head usually is where I keep the the lines and the palette. So, sort of carefully choosing my shadows and my midtones, and I want to choose the base tone for the skin, which is a really yellowy bright, not bright yellow, but somewhere in between. Just that right beige somewhere here. Yes. Okay. It's a bit bright, but seeing as where your values are, it's okay. So this is your highlight. This is your val. This is your blush. This is your shadow, and this is your base tone. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to take this color mode down, get another color mode going, and bring in the blush. I'm going to throw the blush over... So this is all editing, by the way. This isn't illustration yet. Not yet. This is all editing. I'm going to throw... See what happens when I throw the blush color in? The skin tone starts to emerge. See what happens, Alex? It's a combination of different colors. It's the value range, which you had, in, you know, in check. But some people do suffer from the value range being a bit too um, dark, and they complain about it being muddy. So I'm placing the blush colors only in the areas like that are, that can entertain that blush tone. So the nose, the lips, and very just discreetly, nothing too intense still needs to be a cool tone beneath certain areas like the eyes. Okay, so a little bit around the chin, just over here on the edge of the chin. Okay, and I'm going to bring that down again. Now I'm going to play with the soft light color, soft light layer. I'm going to get the skin tone color. And I'm going to place it over all the areas that are getting some mid-tone colors going on, on soft light, guys. Everything is 100, well, except my paintbrush, it's 20%. So 
So what this is going to do is counteract those gray tones. And there is a problem with the values here, and I'll fix that in a second. It's already starting to come together. So remember all the light spots. I teach you about dark spots. I also teach you about light spots. Good shadow here, by the way. Beautiful shadow. Very nicely placed. Need to desaturate that, though, in a second. I'm going to place some of that soft light tone, that light, on the chin and on the top, bottom lip. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> That's the thunder outside. One issue was that I wanted to talk about is the nose, the way you've um, highlighted. The lightest point on the face right now is the cheekbone here. That is wrong because the nose is the highest point, therefore it receives the most light. It's also the most reflective. So at this stage, if you do get a bit saturated, it's okay. You can always desaturate, but it's good if you just be aware of that. Don't have an oversaturated, overcompensating for the grayscale that you had with oversaturation. So I'm going to bring that value up for the nose, bring the value down a touch for the cheek. Now I'm starting to paint. As you can see, I'm starting to illustrate now. There's no more editing. Editing isn't yet done, but there's none for now. I'm going to bring in some of that red. And the reason why these colors that I'm choosing are working is because I chose them with the values in mind that you had chosen already for the value for the shadows and for the midtones. So this dark reddish color, I've, I chose it with this value in mind that you had for the skin. That way it matches. All I have to do is throw the color on, the value is still the same. I'm, all I'm really doing is adding color. It's like using color mode but more efficiently. Remember the values. That's the point of grayscale. When you want to transfer into color, know the value you used and choose the color within that periphery. That way you never really go wrong. I'll change back to my soft brush. I think it'll take me forever to... use the textured brush. I'm really working with a low opacity here. Highlighting the edge of that nose. Okay, now I'm going to take that highlighter, place it on the area of the lips that is the brightest. So it's usually the corner of the lips, the a hi a highlight of the lips, and the lit part of the cupid's bow that is the brightest part. This might seem like a lengthy process to you guys, but just just do it. T um, rough it out. <laughs> Be a trooper. You'll get through it, and you'll get through it knowing that much more. So the nose always has a bit of a, a highlight. Now I am zoomed out, so I want to I want to take a look at the values. I want to see what happens to the values. I am zoomed out. This I am aware of. Bringing some of that blush color in. What I'm going to do next is desaturate the eye whites so they can go back to that cool eye white color. I'm also going to darken them up with a red and with the dark color of the eyes. And then I'm going to brighten up the inner part. I know they are brown but I'm going to darken up the inner part of them. I mean lighten it up, sorry. So that I could show you how to make eyes look a little bit more lively and then you can darken them after you've done that. Back to brown, you can darken them up. Okay, so I'm going to get some of that medium color, place it on the... under. it's already too bright. Just decreasing my brush opacity, placing it in there. The light is coming from above, and it is going to reflect a little bit on the upper area of the eye. Most of it is going to reflect on the base 
And there is a part, the tear duct, the, the water line, that needs to be light because it's facing upward. Its direction is facing upward. And so it is going to have that water line lightness to it. So let me just save. Okay. Let me zoom out. I'm a bit too zoomed in. All I'm really doing right now is just figuring out these values, balancing everything out. Let me take away that waterline. I need to do it zoomed out. Like, I, I zoom in sometimes as well when I don't need to. It's just an automatic, like, loss of control. <coughs> okay, so that waterline, see how quickly I managed to know where to place that waterline when I zoomed out. It's just really, really important for, for you guys to know. So I'm just going to place a black up here for me to use. Okay, I got that. I'm going to cool down these blacks, which is the darkest area of the eye. Bring everything back to a cool tone. I'm going to take it back to brown. But now I have more of an, of a, an eye that has depth to it. I'm also going to cool down the shadows of the eyelashes. Remember that. That's really crucial as well. Okay. I'm going to bring some of the eye, eye light or eye water, the, the, the wateriness of the eye. But not before I show you something important. An eye casts a shadow on itself. The eyelids cast the shadow on a cornea. The cornea is the white part of the eye. They cast a shadow on it. Don't forget that shadow. That's why eyes can look very artificial sometimes if you neglect that shadow. Okay. Now I'm going to place the eye wetness. Zoom out as to black, please. When you zoom out, it's really easy to pinpoint. It's like being a sniper, you always have to be, <laughs> have to be at high ground. Okay, I'm going to bring those lights back really gently, the ones that you had originally. Really just being really picky with where I place them, because it, it can make or break this painting. I'm going to put another eye light. Seems like the light can reach that area. Now I'm going to sharpen to keep the, the detail going. Now I'm going to get my desaturation tool and desaturate around areas where I saturated too much on the face. Areas where there should be shadow. Okay. Now all the shadowed areas need a new layer. A new color layer. I'm going to bring in the blush now. I'm gonna place it over everything as well. And there needs to be there needs to there need to be there needs to be some <laughs> value changes for the neck and the arm. This is where the value has some problems. I will be lifting that value up. Another issue is that around every light lit area is a circle of saturation of red. Alright? You guys need to remember that. Really important. I'm going to merge that red that I just added down. Let me show you the difference before or after. Really helps to keep the skin alive. Going to get that desaturation tool. Bring down the intensity a little bit. Desaturate some of these highlights. Another issue with the way you painted the face is the lips, the darkness of the lips, that dark place where the mouth is open, revealing some of the inner part of the mouth. Shouldn't be that oh, that wide. Should be just a small area that the straight middle of the lips 
showing that the lips are open. Now I've talked about dark spots. You have the dark spots of the eyes and the dark spot of the nose. And sometimes I say you can have two. There's six. You can you can opt out one set for the rest for two. You have to have at least two. But for this image here, since we're dealing with um, the outer values are, are almost the same as the cheek, we need some definition. So you should darken the outer corners just a touch. Okay. Remember, lips are not an alien species on the face. They do have the same skin covering them. They belong to the same human. So it's okay to blend the, the lips with the skin around them. It's okay to do that. So there's a part of the lips that's facing upward from the corners. I need to just draw that in. Okay. And then the highlighted part of the lips. Very, very picky with my brush strokes, so I do apologize if I'm always control Z setting. Control Z, sorry, I'm Canadian. <laughs> I shouldn't apologize, but okay. Okay, so then one problem that I'm facing now is that the value of this area of the face is too too dark. You see, it's hard for me to change it to anything else. So I'm going to get the same shadow beneath the nose and place it over this area. And then I'm going to shade accordingly. Let me darken those corners of the lips. The top corner, the top lip is always a bit darker, by the way, because it faces down. Now, I know it's a lengthy process, and you're all probably like, I might as well just paint straight with color, and you, you should. But if you're having trouble with color and painting with color is difficult, break down the process. Start with the grayscale and then edit the job later. Trust me, you'll get it. Just trust me. I need to define the area of her chin a little bit more. And only the highest, highest point of the chin gets the highlight. So where I placed it right now is wrong. I'm just going to push the highlight upward to the area facing the light source directly. Okay, and now I can go for some darker tones and I'm going to bring in the purples in a second. The purples are also in skin tones. So I'm choosing a really dark black for the pupils. It's going to bring the values way down. I'm going to take the values to home note. See how alien like that looks? I'm going to take that up to a stage, a stage where I like it and then now I'm going to use that same darkness around the lashes, like eyeliner. Remember when we did our original color change, or from grayscale to color, that wash we did, changes the blacks that should be blacks as well, which are lashes and the blacks of the, the eyes. Okay. That area is dark as it should be now. The area of the nose, just a bit of that. Not too much, just a touch. And then using the one of the nose, I drop to that to find the one of the lips. Alright, now I'm going to get like an acidic red, almost an acidic pink. And instead of using color mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it on straight. I'm going to paint it on all the areas that really need it. So the lips definitely need this. The cheeks need it. The areas that are most lit. Make a second estimate. That's too saturated. Put on 7% opacity, just so I can stay in control. Only the areas that the light touches, remember, not, not the different kind of red happens under the light, and uh, the shadows. For the lips, I can put it on a color mode, because I want to keep the values the same. For these lips. Ok, 
Okay, so we're slowly entering that stage now where everything is starting to look more like skin and less like mud. Even when you have the right values, sometimes it can still look wrong because you forget there are other colors in the skin. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is sort of define the shadow that's on her face a little bit more. I'm going to get my lasso tool and I'm going to figure out where the shadow is. Place the dark color like that. Maybe put it on multiply. Decrease the opacity. Filter, let me deselect. Oh, I already deselected. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. That shadow is just a touch more focused now. I'm going to desaturate it. Maybe decrease the opacity just a touch more. So the shadow is a bit more focused. Makes sense for the light. And seems to be working for me. Okay, so let's give her eye color and a change. Let's see if we can get a blue in there. I love blue eyes. I like to paint. <clears throat> not on, not on like, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I can play some of the blue on the eye color area, but when I place, when I change an eye color to a different color, I don't just change the eye, I change the cornea as well. So it has the level of that blueness to it. Decrease that opacity, bring it down a notch, and then throw that over. Now it's time for the purples and greens. I'm gonna get some of those purples. You know my process now, so it's color mode, paint over, merge down. Color mode, paint over, merge down. I got a really nice purple, sort of like a pastel, darkish purple. Nothing too saturated. Okay, so placing that purple um, in the right spot is really important, and it's really mainly in the areas of shadow, and that's pretty much the only place it'll be. Okay, I'm going to bring some of it to the corners where the shadow meets the light of the face, and I'm going to bring just a little bit over the lips desaturate them a bit because when I bring in the purple everything sort of desaturates. So you see how bringing in one color makes another color go darker or lighter makes you change this one color and you keep changing back and forth up and down until it turns into the perfect thing. It's not going to look good stage to stage. It's back and forth. It's a recursive process. Okay? Just have faith. Look at it before the purples before the purples and after the purples. It's a very slight change but it changes everything about the painting. Okay? So now, like I said, between every light and shadow is a saturation line. So I'm going to get a really saturated red. Go back to color and place that saturation line just between the shadow and the light. That's it. That's all I need. I'm done. I'm going to bring in some of the sponge tool and desaturate the skin just a touch. Remember, skin is a bit palish. It does have reds. It does have all that stuff. But it is still palish. It is still a very yellow light palish system. It is see-through. It is transparent, I mean translucent structure. Now I'm gonna get a blue. I'm gonna get a really pale light blue to place in the highlights. You're gonna ask me what the hell are you doing with that color? And it's basically to bring in some cool to the skin tone without using purple. And you'll see what it does in a second, what it does for the skin ever so slightly. Throw that in there. Even less opacity. Let's go for 4% opacity. Do you see what it does for the skin? Really softens up those tones. On the lips as well, a touch. Okay, and a little bit on the nostril. On the nose. See how skin is a combination of, of colors and and it's just a big chemical formula. I still need to work on the lips just a touch. But everything in time will start to fall together and I'll be there painting it till it's done. So all I'm asking for is your time and trust. <laughs> okay, 
soften up these edges, merge them with the face. So if you don't know where the dark spots and light spots of a face are, I'll show you in a second. Dark spots are the two eyes, two nostrils, and two lips, corners, and the light spots are in this general area, the T-zone, the eyes, the upward facing areas of the chin, the milk mustache, the, the cupid's bow, the tip of the nose, and the chin. Okay. <clears throat> those are these areas. If you have those areas light and you have those areas dark, everything will work for you. So now I get Burn Tool on Shadows. What Burn Tool does is it darkens and saturates. And I really like it for the nose because it always does a pretty decent job if you have it on, on perf perf Protect Tones and on a generally low intensity exposure, I mean. It'll get the job done without too much, too much damage. Again, desaturate, desaturate, desaturate. Right. I'm going to sculpt the face just a touch more. And then the shadow of the nose is a tad too dark. It's to be a bit more blurry. And the other nostril needs to be visible. sort of hint at its presence, not really over sculpt it, just hint at its presence. Okay, just dabbing my way through. I need to relocate the shadow of the nose. The, sh the nose is the brightest part of the face with this light, light source type, which means that it will be the one casting the most shadow. It's cause and effect. Need to push the tip of the nose out just a touch, straighten the nose bridge back together with the symmetry. Push the lips back. I'm using liquify tool right now. Okay. Bring that value down. Go back into color, adjust some colors for myself. <clears throat> okay, sharpen that nose shadow. some shiny skin directly beneath the eye that is always reflecting some light back. And don't forget that. Okay. Careful not to outline. area still seems to be a bit green. What's the opposite of green on the color wheel? If you want to counteract a color, you get its opposite, which is a sort of really peachy red or coal red. Placing that on the chin area counteracts that green look. On the nose, lips and the cheekbones, just gently. Okay, I'm going to get that blue again. To 
balance all the cools. Maybe a little bit more desaturated. Okay. Then finally, I'm gonna get the highlighter color. This usually should be done with a pour, like a pour system, like pours or something. And it's usually in no man's land, but you're not gonna use all of it because mostly I use it with really low opacity, like you're seeing me do here. And this yellow is the yellow of the light source reflecting directly back. And you see how I'm painting now. Nothing too um, edity. Technical. Just using my... Just eyeballing it. Bring down that Cupid's bow a touch. The shadow of the mouth should be a bit darker. Or it might not be there at all, depending on the lips, you know. It just might be a simple matter of just bringing down that Cupid's bow bulge on the lips. You have a bit of a more, a bit more of a lip that reads better, instead of forcing it to be open and it looking wrong. I know these videos that I make are a bit long. And what you can do is you don't have to watch them directly as if they were a lecture. I mean, I appreciate it if you give me that much attention, but I don't. I, I like to multitask, and I want to recommend you guys do it too. Get a painting open and start multitasking. Watch the video as you paint your own stuff. Maybe it'll influence the way you change it. You choose a color or the way you paint that particular painting that day. Because you're drawing art and then you're listening to art. And your eyes are on the art and your ears are on the art. You can only improve that way. Multitasking is something I recommend you sort of perfect for yourselves. <clears throat> Besides, I'm just sitting there talking on and on. If you guys don't get something done, you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> my voice can be very boring sometimes. And I record late, so I have to stay quiet. Unless my neighbors will hate me forever and always. As you can see, I'm really, really careful at this stage. Super duper careful. I don't want to disrupt any of the colors I've, I've found. I'm not going to worship these colors. I will change them if I need to. But they seem to be working for me. No, I know I've changed the personality of the girl you've drawn, but this is just my muscle memory. For faces. I'm sorry if it does look different. See, all that I've been doing is zooming out. Now I need to zoom in and find some of these, these edges. So I'm going to find an edge for the lips. I'm going to find an edge for this area of the lips. I'm going to find an edge for this highlight. I'm going to use the, some of the chin. Borrow some from the chin. Chin is cool like that. Let me borrow his stuff. See, nothing is too dark. Need to jump and zoom. This is when you zoom in. When you know that there are edges that need to be drawn. And zooming out isn't, you're just going to be making mistakes all up and down. Make sure when you zoom in, though, you're not painting away everything you did when you were zoomed out. So that's going to F things up a bit. Zoom back out. Double check. Looking good. Save. Don't forget to save, goddamn. Uh, and. Gonna bring some of that highlight. There are areas of the lips that can be highlighted. Bring the highlight of the nose on the nostril. Of course, because it is as bulgy as the tip is. Okay. You do not stir, don't fuck things up. Soften these shadows up a bit. Zoom back out, careful. The chin shouldn't be lighter than the nose. Neither should this area. The nose should be pretty much the lightest spot. So let me choose another skin tone color, something very gentle. 
and on the yellow side not too much bring down the opacity again just place it on all of these highlighted light spots really softly this is just my style I mean you can do whatever you gotta do to get you into the painting Alex you can just paint rough you can you do everything that is your instinct this is just me showing you my technique and how I transfer it from grayscale to color but of course it's all in your reign okay so now what I said earlier about the value of the neck I need to get the dodge tool on shadows and bring that value up dude it's a bit dark it's only dark in the area where the shadow of the neck is. That's pretty much the only spot. I can even lasso it for you. It's a bit too much. Sorry, one second. Okay. And using the skin of the net of the of the face, I don't even need to use liquify. I mean, color mode anymore. I can just zoom out again. Figure out where all the light spots are. You're trying to force us to see her arm. Her arm wouldn't be visible at this point from the way she's sitting. I mean, it would be a bit visible. Let me just. Down according to here, and she, her arm shouldn't even be like that bright anymore. Let me get my colors out of the way. Cancel. Let's clean up a little bit. Do some caretaking. Take that down. I'm going to get that blue of the background you had and blew away any areas where there isn't skin. Okay. On the edge of the face there, our skin disappears. That that wash that we did is still bleeding into other areas where it shouldn't be. I'm going to put some over the area of the eye because it's in shadow. I'm going to put some over the area of the neck. And put some over the eye as well for color. And then finally I'm going to get the green. The green is for the area under the eye. And it's a very, very slight change, and I've talked about it in my other video. But it does bring in that veiny, really light skin. Sorry about my tablet. Freaking useless Wacom crap. <coughs> veiny like the skin there is really transparent and so the veins are, are visible through the purple veins mixed with the yellow the skin looks very green okay just adjusting color modes here finding a nice gray bring down some of those reds balance everything out okay and one problem that I'm finding is the, so let me show you before and after, after we cleaned up. So that the lips are a touch too dark, maybe bring up the value of the lips just a bit. Red tones. And then relocate my colors. One more dab at the blush for the lips. Yellows. Now this is a very, really sped up job. And of course, this isn't my comfort zone of painting. I do not paint grayscale to color. I go straight in for color. Because I did do the grayscale stage. I feel like I've done enough that I can have a confident approach. I'm going to merge that down. 
And now I'm just going to do a bit of real painting. Now it seems to be a bit far away from... rest of the face. Put that in a bit closer. Decrease the size, touch. Yeah, that was a bit high. Really super duper careful right now, making sure I don't take too much away. Just doing some very basic rendering. Of course I can't, you know, spend hours and hours on this, but you'll see just by the before and after I'll do in a second um, what happens between, you know, grayscale and, and color, and it, it's not that much color. Like you probably guys, you, you in your minds probably think that it should look something like this <laughs> after, because you've used so much gray, but it's not that much of a distance away from gray. This is grayscale, and this is where we are right now. I mean, it's not that big a step up, is it? We've respected the values. We've stayed there a little bit. You can even saturate up to here if you wanted to, and it would still be safe zone. But we're right here. Look at that. This is grayscale, guys. And this is the color we added today. Was it that difficult? No, it wasn't. Why? Because we, we, we did it step by step. We allowed the, the image to transform to enter a state of stage of metamorphosis. Um, we added one color, we took that down, and we added another color, and then we added another color to make that color work with this color. We added the greens and the blues, and everything was coming together. This is why we recommend using grayscale, because it makes you think about each and every single individual color of the color formula of the skin. Each and every single one is considered. Let me erase this. This rough brush stroke you threw in. So you can see the full effect. And because the light is generally very dark, even the eyes right now are a bit too light for that area. You can darken them up just a touch. The eye whites, I mean. Like unless they're super glowy. I would even add more cool tones to the area of the skin and the shadow. And blue tones. And of course, you weren't painting in grayscale, you had a bit of a blue going on. <laughs> okay, and that's pretty much it. It's doable. Um, there's a lot more to add. You can add some more um, acidic pinks all the way up in here. <clears throat> you can add them to the areas where there's a lot of highlight between the, the yellow and the and the beige. You can add it to the lips to bring in that feminine color. You can add it to the cheekbones just to shine through. You see what that does? And on the edge of the chin. to bring in a bit more blood. But you had the base tone going very well for you. 
and you can bring in the dodge tool, beautiful dodge tool that you can have to you have to use on low <laughs> exposure to get that that nice yummy highlight. I know I'm a perfectionist. I, I, I am not gonna <laughs> until I feel satisfied with it, that's when I'm gonna stop. So bear with me. Just trying to get some stuff sorted. Some form stuff, structure, bone structure. Sorted with the lips. Okay. And some of the light of the chin and the cheeks will shine on the upper part of the eyes just over here. Really slightly, like, holy crap, it's not even visible, but it should be there. Okay. And on the brow bone, in the inner part of the brow bone. Right over here. I'll show you a close-up of the before and after at the end, hopefully, if I remember. I'll mess it up. I'm going to bring those values I just added down a touch. And of course, at this stage, you can throw in the eyebrows. Let me get them on a different layer. And merge them down when I'm happy. Let me zoom out a touch. Okay. So yeah, she is in the shadow, but her eyebrows would still be visible, technically. Just a slight suggestion of a brow. My technique is I paint the area I want, take it down to almost zero visibility, and now I've mapped it out. And then I go in and add more, and add more on low visibility, on low opacity, I mean. So I, I don't bother with heavy brush strokes from the really, really um, uh, late editing work. I work a pretty, pretty low opacity. Okay, I needed to bring that whole thing down a notch or two. Get that no man's land black. I'm not going to use the full capacity. I'm going to get a new layer. Create that gradual step down to the dark side from the top corner, of course. Not to take away from the skin, though. I do erase the areas I don't need. Okay, and I bring that down, and then finally, finally, edge work. Edges! They bring out the form so beautifully. Some areas of the face should be soft on the edges, but goddamn, when you bring in those edges form is like pop. See what's happening? Woo! Fucking best part of the painting. <laughs> I love form. What am I gonna say? I love it. I love it. It's just the end all and be all of art. Some areas should stay generally soft, like the cheekbone edges, and the chin, the neck can have some sharpness to it. So Alex, um, it's your choice now, <laughs> where you want to take this information, you can, or if, if, like, if it's helped at all, which I hope it has. Okay, now I'm just going to filter sharpen, unsharp mask, oopsie, what is wrong with my unsharp mask, why is it doing this, it doesn't usually do this, but okay, I don't know, I'll use sharpen tool for now to fix it up, maybe I messed up with the, oops, okay, sharpen the nose, sharpen the lips, the, the 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 chest is still a bit dark and it's still a bit dead like zombie. You might want to bring in some P 
peachy colors. And of course, paint in more of that area. And of course, the edges. It's all about dim edges, man. Remember the shadows of the, f of the fabric on the skin? enough caution. Just a simple stroke should do it. Loop, loop. Okay. And I'm not sure what kind of hair she has, but I'm feeling I'm feeling a fringe. I'm gonna get a new layer going. Oopsie. Of course, you don't need to add this part in, it's just for the sake of the portrait. And a smudge tool, smudging some, some hairs. some of it on her chest. Smudge to that motherfucker. I know this is not the character you painted, but So now I'm going to flatten it. Okay, cancel. I'm going to just merge it. <laughs> well, it was anticlimactic. And I'm going to highlight these areas of the hair I just dabbled on. This is where the anxiety is over, by the way. This is where we can start breathing. Oh my god. Yes, oh my god, I can breathe now. Because it, the, the, the flaming rod of insecurity is not up your butt anymore. And it's <laughs> and you're safe. You're like, yes! Easy as to break. Easy. Okay, so I'm just going to... Get that stuff you had before um, out of the way, sort of. And now it looks like she has the mumps, but it's okay because now I'm going to just brush that back in. Okay, dokie. Really, really like just be careful kind of deal here. Gonna get the other part of her hair style in there. To frame the face a bit. I know it turned into a completely different person, but again, <laughs> my instincts versus yours. That's just different artists to different things with the paintings. And save, and you can literally do anything now. You want to make the eyes, you want to make a stylistic choice and, and make the eyes a bit more... a bit more saturated. No color. You can go ahead and do that. You can pretty much do everything now, because you have your color. You're in your color stage. You're good to go, buddy. I'm going to throw some of that blue on the cornea as well. Not just the pupil. Just the iris, I mean. Maybe some blue eyeshadow. Ok, 
Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, it's doable. You can do it. Leave the details for the color area, for the color part. Um, because if you go and throw freckles in, in the grayscale, you're going to paint over it because you saw how much painting I did with the raw brush strokes without using color mode. <laughs> Excuse me, that was my hiccup. <laughs> but look, I'm going to throw in some freckles. <clears throat> Un momento. Un momento, whatever. I'm just going to bring them down a touch. Filter blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, I'm gonna darken and desaturate. Let me just desaturate first. Let me put them on multiply. Play around with the color mode, see which one really works for you. Hey, soft light, you're always my friend. Thank you. And take away some of those. I'm going to desaturate completely, maybe. Really gently, nothing too detailed. Just the hint of it, just the abstract hint of it. The clone stamp gets some on the face area as well. And then it erase away. The opacity of the eraser down a touch too. Take the layer opacity down. Now you have a bit more texture to the skin, do you see? Sort of blemishes and freckles. You can desaturate those as well. Darken them. Duplicate. Merge down. Okay. And erase some more. Maybe add a beauty mark or two, just to give the skin complexion a bit more of intrigue than leaving it on blank. It is also a canvas, term of phrase. that is that nothing that does more than the features you don't want anything more demanding than the features are features are there because they're the part of the face that is responsible for the face don't have to throw in a bunch of freckles that are too dark even in real life they don't come that dark that they interrupt or else the person would be just a completely block black spot walking around no racism intended. Fucking hell. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna edge out the chin just a touch. We're gonna leave it soft. But just a touch because it is a pretty bony area. Okay. And I completely painted away her blemish. Gonna sharpen that, sharpen that, sharpen that. Get 
that painterly texture back in. Hmm, I don't like the blemish. You're all probably like, oh my god, make up your mind. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it at that. It's the rack, the perfectionist never stops. Holy shit, I can't stop myself. Oh my god, stop, please. It's the rack. Somebody, <laughs> somebody stop me. Yeah, I'm just bringing the saturation down. It's a bit too high for me. Okay, that's it. Let's do a before and after, ladies and gentlemen. Before. Like, I explained everything. I explained that the symmetry needs to be intact. I did take it over into my realm of rendering. I'm sorry about that, because I can't, because I'm me. <laughs> um, but, um, but I hope you got what I meant about the different values and how every color needs to be a certain value. And how skin isn't just one value, because if you use that one, I mean one color, because if that one's going to look muddy, muddy, there's a great deal of rendering and painting that goes in. And I walked you through everything. Maybe the history stats haven't collected that much, but I walked you guys through everything, okay? I hope that is helpful. It's doable. It's just, you're just doing two things at a different time. But sometimes after getting it down, I recommend go straight into color. But I do need you guys to do at least two or three so you can learn. Um, learning, that's what it's all about. Alright, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching. I know this has been a long video, but I hope it's been worth it. Um, my time is yours. Whenever you guys need any, anything answered, please ask me in the description box below. I do have a Facebook and a Twitter. Ask me there. I've made myself widely available on this behemoth of the internet, um, social media. Um, so there's no excuse for not being able to contact me. Um, and yes, that's it.